all right i believe we are live now this is escape from tarkov it's a video game that a few of you have been asking me about about how it is how good it is so i'm gonna make a, a decent stream on kame's channel just so everybody can kind of understand um what this game is about and what it looks like a few other you big youtubers have played this game but the thing is they cover it when they are playing with like all this good body armor and machine guns and whatnot I'm gonna do the opposite route and I'm gonna play on a character that merely has like a pistol, no body armor and very basic gear. I'm gonna tr try to survive a raid uh, while battling my way to the finish line basically. So as you can see we have the options Escape from Tarkov, Character and Trading. In Character, I uh, chose your main character, all the gear. This is the gear that I put on my main character so he has a backpack with this amount of spaces. He has some splints for fractures in case he gets shot and it breaks a bone. He also has a bandage to cure bleeding, as well as uh, magazines for this AK-4 or 74N. And I also have the best body armor and the helmet in the game, along with night vision, a few other things. But that's beside the point. Over here is the stash, your global stash. Uh, this is where you can take your gear that you win. Like if I go into a raid and I fill this backpack with gear. I can take gear in and out of the backpack and put it into a stash to use for later raids. As you can see I pretty much all already filled it with weapons and armor and backpacks and medical supplies out to wazoo. Uh, but I intend to get more this time. Um, and trading you can go to certain merchants like these guys like a military operator so he will sell you ammunition, magazines, scopes, silencers, gun barrels and even some really cool guns. Um, and all the money in this game is centered around US dollars over here, euros, and the ruble. But the rubles are an old form of currency, so um, basically the rubles you'll find the most of, but they are technically the quote unquote worst. Uh, then this is like the nurse, the therapist, who will sell you like maps for certain places, as well as medical supplies, some food and water. And then this is the pusher on the bottom. Who sells you like certain bags, glasses, glasses allow you like if it is raining it allows your vision not to be blurred, the hat will also keep water off of your face, uh, it does not provide any protection now, uh, the contact headset makes everything except for voices and gunshots quieter so you will not hear like crunching of leaves and whatnot. Uh, night vision, well we all know what night vision is used for, as well as like a tactical vest and a certain mounts that so you can put flashlights uh and laser sights on your weapons as well as like a stock but this is and the last guy is actually called defense and defense you can practically sell anything to you can see he pretty much has he has like night vision but gun barrels and hats and bags and knives and backpacks and good body armor and helmets it's very weird uh he just he has all of it all of it for everybody but something that is very interesting about this game and it's very cool is that um, you can customize your weapons to an insane degree. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right now how much you can actually mod weapons. You can see you go into customization, you can rotate your weapon all the way around, modify everything on it. You can take off like the dust cover. Like here's the dust cover. No more dust cover. You can now see the inside of your weapon. But then you can put it right back and attach another sight to it. Or uh, you can attach sights here, here, here. And you can have just like three sights on your weapon. Um, you can put silencers on your silencers. You can put grips on your grips. Um, you can, I, I'm using a pistol grip on this AK-47 right now. And a skeletal stock, which you can change that. And oh, it's fantastic. You can put it to an insane degree. And same thing with any weapon. Like, I got this one right here. My favorite weapon. It's got like a muzzle brake on it. Two scopes on it. As you can see, you got like a sniper scope and a red dot sight. As well as an extended magazine, a wooden stock, and also another pistol grip. Um, I think this is fantastic to be able to do. Not a lot of games give you the customizing options. Um, also, the combat is going to be very brutal. When you get shot, your guy will actually scream and cuss. And uh, when you bleed, bleeding will take away certain parts of your body. And you can actually see how you're injured to what degree. It'll be very cool. But what I'm going to do is show you now. When you want to escape from Tarkov, which is the area, you can either go on your main character that you can deck out with the gear in your global inventory, the stuff that you just saw, or 
you can play on a scav. And what a scav is, uh, is basically a local bandit with a random set of starting gear. It's your Tarkov and you make the rules. So basically you spawn in a random location with random gear with uh, probably near random people and you try to make it out then, which is much more random and it's also very, very, very difficult because most of the time you spawn in with like a pistol. Very rarely do you go in with like an AK-47 or maybe a shotgun or something like that. The best part about this is that you lose nothing. All you go, you go on the scav, you make it out, you get all the gear. But if you die, you do not lose anything. So you're always gaining. You're almost never losing. In this case, if I were to die with like the night vision, the head, the helmet, the big body armor, the good AK, and the backpack full of supplies, if I were to die on this main character, that would be very bad for me. But this guy, I don't not invest any gear into him because it is randomly generated. So I'm going to start as a scav, and the only three places that are available right now are customs, which is like, um, is literally a customs map, so like a train yard, a small factory, and also like a dorm rooms and a few things like that, like it says right here. Customs terminal, dorm, fuel oil storage, and other infrastructure. In factory, factory is just cancer right now, <laughs> because factory does not rely on any types of weather because it is like indoors like this. At the same time, it is super close range, so this is like a main area for PvP. People will go in with shotguns and pistols and just kill each other right away. And then there is woods, which where I'm going to be going. And woods is basically like the super drawn out map. It is a state protected wildlife reserve. Um, which is really nice because it's like a set of woods and a lumber mill. And that is where you can go and try to survive. Uh, the only ways to make it out of Tarkov or to get to an extraction point which is randomly placed on a map or you die there's no other way to make it out now you can also team with random people like if I go to this guy I can like invite into a group but like I do not know this guy so I'm not gonna get him into a group I'm just gonna click ready and it'll even tell you like what the weather is like what time it is in games so you can expect if you need night vision or not and the name of your guy my name is Slava Kuloi and then I'm gonna go in and hopefully not run into this level 58 so here we go the loading screen just takes a little bit and it might lag so just be patient with me I've also taken down the ticker um, the most recent event and also the chat on the right side just so I can focus on the game and uh, not have to worry about um, random sheet blocking the stream so you guys cannot see what is going on because this game is very intense and you need to be alert at all times what it looks like, I have some kind of uh, decent caliber pistol. I don't have any armor on. All I have is a tactical vest and this little transformer bag right here. And as you can see, um, scav gameplay. And it'll tell you the difference right here. And we are spawning in. I can hear the in-game volume. Imagine. Once this changes to like a wedding server response then that means that you are being loaded into the game so I have to get ready. At matching nothing happens. That's looking when it says matching it is looking for a player with at, with gear similar or less than what you have on right now. And I pretty much am a minimalistic scav so when I spawn in I'm gonna be with people hopefully not with like AKs and body armor. But you never know. So we have to be careful the entire time. And the game is very 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 unforgiving. If you get killed, everything that you have on your character is gone. You just, you die and it is on your corpse for other people to have. And uh, it actually generates the servers, the different levels that you actually play on, like um, different woods servers. So you never can play with the same person twice, almost never. So if you lose your gear, it's pretty much gone forever. So while we wait for the gear, or while we wait to load in, um, I just want to make sure that Kame is getting all this information because they kind of rushed. So matching can take a long time. The longest I've waited is 10 minutes to get into a game, but I'm pretty sure it will not take that long. If it does, I will just back out and go into a new server and hopefully it will load in quicker. Do not fear, a scav is here. And what scav means uh, is basically like um, attacker or like a bandit, marauder, pirate almost. 
in Russian. And the game is Russian, so everything is in Russian. Uh, the scavs only speak Russian. The PMCs that you play as have a Russian accent, but they speak English. Um, and if you like, I can yell at people in Russian as this scav, which is this Russian guy right here, this Russian bandit. Just gonna wait to load in, and as soon as I get in, I'm gonna have to act quickly, so it will, uh, it will make sure that I don't waste any time. And please try to keep up because this is, uh, I will not be stopping a lot, I will have to keep moving and looking around. And if I do stop, I'm gonna be listening, so I just wanna make sure that we do not, we do not get fucking executed by a guy with like full body armor as soon as I load in. Because that has happened a few times. And unfortunately, the map I'm spawning in on only has like two respawn points as, as a player scout. Because there's not just like players on the main guys with body armor running around and then like players like these. Like me, uh, human control. There are also AI, like computer controlled bandits running around. The same thing as uh, scouts. You cannot tell the difference between a player and an AI one until like the player ones run because scav like AI scouts cannot run only players can run if they do not run then there is no difference basically and actually in most cases the AI scav are more dangerous because they have that aim lock like CSGO bots do where they can like track you through a wall and as soon as they you appear they just headshot you I've just been informed by HR that the game volume is a little loud, so I'm going to turn it down. Let me know how that is. HR hopefully does not fire me immediately. La 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 How does my voice sound over the game? Hopefully it sounds good. And there is not much else because once the gunfire starts, if it starts, no, I should say when it starts. Oh, fantastic! Good, good, good. I've been informed by HR that it is so much better. But um, once the gunfire starts, like I said, if it starts, it's gonna be very loud because scavs, they play not the players and not like normal main characters, the PMCs. But like the AI scouts, if they see you, they will not stop shooting even if you're behind a wall. So they will be shooting the wall while they move around you, which is why they are so dangerous. Because some surfaces you can actually penetrate with a weapon. Like um, thin surfaces, like maybe a plaster wall or perhaps like maybe a tree you can shoot through very easily with these weapons. While other surfaces like maybe some kind of scrap metal or maybe like a concrete barrier. You cannot shoot throws as easily. I believe we should be getting into a game soon. If not, I'm just gonna click back and load up again. Whoa, excuse me. I'm gonna get another shot of vodka. Here we go. I believe hopefully we should be loading in soon actually I'm just gonna quickly back out also there is a huge penalty if you are to be like on your main character let me quickly show you but if you are on your main character not the scav the guy that I was on but if you are on the main character this guy right here your your main character if you are on him and you actually disconnect from the game like you actually leave or your internet connection cuts out not only does it count as you technically dying, but you get marked um, in-game for a while as a wall, which means that you just leave games. Because it can mess up the looting system, where sometimes your loot will not spawn in, or they cannot take your loot because your internet connection just dies. So, yeah, people who are pieces of shit will disconnect their internet when they die, so then you cannot take their stuff, and it pretty much glitches out the entire game. Here we go. I'm gonna go back into it. Which is something that you need to fix, but at the same time, this is in alpha. This is not even out released as a main game yet. So 
so there's some information to really like. They give you a whole background, there's a bunch of lore that the company Battlestick Games actually created behind this Tarkov. And if you looked in the beginning, there's more than three locations besides Woods Custom and Factory that are going to be released when the full game comes out. They are releasing tons of them, which will open up a huge variety. Right now, this game is available not even on Steam. You have to go to, uh, just search it online, Escape from Tarkov, and it will link it to the official page. But the game for instant access is available for like maybe $60, maybe more. If you wanted it back before the alpha was barely getting started, then you had to pay like $150, which is what I did for myself. So I could get in and play right away. And it gave me a bigger global stash, the place where you can put your items and a few other little perks. But um, yeah, the game is kind of expensive at the moment. If you want to wait until the game is finished, I would recommend that because there are quite a few things that is wrong with this game. And I will mention a few while we wait. The first thing, if even if you have the helmet, like the, my main character has the helmet, the good body armor, the night vision, and all that gear on you, I can take you down with just this pistol. If you get behind somebody and you shoot them in the back of the head once, it kills them immediately, regardless of armor. So even the worst character with the worst gear can kill the best characters with the best gear. Which is a good balancing aspect, however, it makes it so like if you get take your whole group can get taken out by a bunch of noobs. Which is not very good, which means that like the harder you work, the more it might not even matter if you get executed by some guy with like nothing, like me with a pistol and a bag. And a attack vest. Also, another issue in this game right now is heat detection. Sometimes uh, if you shoot a scav with a close range with a shotgun, like you will see the entire shell connect with our body, well the scav will just kind of casually turn around, fire one single bullet out of whatever gun, it could be a shotgun, it could be an AK, it could be a pistol, and it will hit you right in the face and kill you immediately. Like it is a 360 spin, just poof, dead. No hesitation, no time at all. So they need to fix that as well, but I'm sure that they will tone down the scavs, because right now scavs are fucking deadly. Uh, the third thing are grenades. Now they added in grenades into the game, which are two kinds. There's like a makeshift in like a professional military. Now the makeshift is okay. It has a small explosion. It will knock, it will kick dust up, and it will kill like weak players like me, but not armored guys. However, the fucking military grenade will blow up the cover you're behind and you and turn it into a fucking crater because of how powerful it is. I saw a character in full body armor against three people in full body armor, all push him at the same time, he threw a grenade at his feet and then ran off into the bushes and when they pushed him the grenade went off, it killed two of the guys with full body armor, the third guy was limping and the guy peeked out and killed him, like a group of 3v1 should not have been able to be win in this game, but that grenade made it possible, so the grenades are kind of broken. The fourth thing in this game are shotguns, now shotguns are ridiculous because at range it does not matter if you are close or long range, the damage is the exact same on a shotgun. Pistols, there's drops, like serious bullet drops, so like if you aim high into the air with a pistol, the bullet will still hit very close to you. And there's no bullet drop for rifles, so you can aim across the map with a rifle and the bullet will practically go straight. However, with a shotgun, it is the same thing, the bullet goes straight, but the damage stays the same. So, at long range with a rifle, you fire the bullet, it's supposed to get technically weaker, or technically more powerful. Well, that is not, it is not changed with a shotgun. I could be at long range, you hit somebody in the face with a shotgun, it kills them, immediately, dead. No hesitation yet again. Nothing to stop it unless you have a helmet, but even then you can still die sometimes, because the helmet does not protect your face, just the top of your head. Another thing that is broken in this game, unfortunately, is the first aid system. All these different things, let's say that you get shot in the leg. Your leg is bleeding, fractured, you feel pain, and you are slowly dying from it. You use a bandage, a, s a bandage to get rid of the bleeding, a splint to cure the, uh, the fracture, and then a painkiller or a morphine to get rid of the pain so your guy can function properly. That is all fantastic. To replenish your health, you'd use a normal first aid kit. Well, there is a single first aid kit that only takes up another extra slot, and it cures all of that when you use it on yourself. It gets rid of the bleeding, the fracture. The only thing it does not cure is pain. 
and it cures all of it and it's about the same price in the store so that is kind of broken right now the fourth thing that is or uh, not the fourth thing but another thing that is an issue in this game is the spawn point specifically on woods nowhere else all the players spawn in one of two areas either next to the red team or a little bit farther away from the red team but still kind of next to it so if somebody with a big rifle just wanted to watch the spawn to prevent human players coming in while their friends go off and kill all their computer control, there would not be nothing stopping them. So otherwise than that, those main problems, the game is fantastic, I enjoy it. It is intense, it is fantastic, the loot is realistic. Um, every single time I extract it feels like I have made a great accomplishment. It is totally worth every penny that you would invest into this game. And I'm actually going to click back one more time, see if we can get loaded into a game. This happens a few times, Do, just bear with me. And I specifically want to go to woods just to show you that, because I will save customs in factory for another video, so I can kind of space these out. For kamikaze specifically. Alright, nice. Loading in time, that's good, matching. I'm just gonna wait for maybe two and a half minutes each time for matching. And if I cannot get matched in that time, I'll just back out and maybe I'll go to factory. Because that loads in right away because the map is so small. But the issue with factory is that it's very easy to die. <laughs> So there might not be a lot of gameplay even though it loads quickly. So I'm gonna wait for woods. If that does not work, I'll spawn into customs and customs is always really nice to play on. The only reason I do not like it is because there are so many areas you can spawn as this scav. It can be very, very, very unpredictable. I could spawn right next to a player or I could spawn right next to the extraction point so I can just leave right away and save my gear. Oof, I think I covered everything. <laughs> I think those are all the main points. Come in, am I missing anything? Any questions, rather? Apparently, I need to kill someone very quickly. <coughs> okay, I will not go to woods. I think the first place I'm gonna go to is customs. And if that does not load quickly, then I'll go to factory and that will load in literally like 20 seconds. So, skip from Tarkov, scav, customs. And there's nobody else playing on here, that is interesting. You do not get matched with another player scav. You get matched with, um player like main characters just so there's a way to combat it and also technically right now there's not a lot of balancing like i said so like if a group of six people with all with full body armor and like machine guns went into a game together and they met up there'd be practically nothing that can stop them except for like locking grenades <laughs> so the balancing is a little off and unfortunately, a lot of YouTubers take advantage of that just to like go around and mass murder everyone, including Bambi's like uh, players that don't go in with anything. They're called Tomahawk runs because you go into the game with absolutely nothing, not even a backpack, and you just see what you can scavenge and then you get to extraction. That results normally in your death. However, the few times that it does succeed, you normally get out with a lot of loot. So. Those are kind of fun and those are also very scary because if somebody with a gun comes at you, the best you can do is run at them with a tomahawk.
So basically, also when you're first starting the game, whew, you can choose to either be a PMC, which is a private military contract contractor, or you can play as a bear. Now the bear and the contract and the PMCs are fighting against each other in this Russian area called Tarkov. So basically, like here's Yusek. These are the oh, never mind. We're going in the game. I'll explain the lore in a little bit. Okay, the game is absolutely beautiful, by the way. Everything looks absolutely fantastic. And in case I did not mention this before, this was made in Unity. That engine, that the same place where they made that like rainbow unicorn attack power, whatever it is, that really shitty 2D arcade game. It was a meme for a little while. That is the same place. So I'm spawning in. You can do tons of different things with your character. You can uh, you can aim down sight. You can even like check the ammo in your pistol and whatnot. Inspect it. You can also lean right and left around corners. Like if I think there's someone down there and I don't want to peek out, I can just like lean and kind of peek out like that. Oh, and that was just a pressed weapon. Oh, and somebody's firing back. As you can hear him. So that was probably a scav being killed by a player character. So we have to watch out for that one. I wanna stick along this wall here and see if I can find a computer scav and shoot them and take their gear and then maybe extract right away. Oh, this is so fucking nerve wracking because you can just die from a single bullet. A story bullet that comes out of nowhere. I will head over to this gas station. Oh, there's a guy on our left. That is another scab. So he's not shooting us because he's another scab. So I'm gonna see if I can actually... Holy shit. Okay. I'm out of ammo, so I'm gonna reload, apparently, inside of his corpse. And what did he have on him? Oh, he had body armor! And an AK-47! As well as glasses. Why not? I'll take the guy's glasses. I'm just that big of an asshole. And he also has a cool tactical rig. What does he have on it? One magazine, two magazine. Three magazines! Oh my god! That is so good! And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just discard this shitty vest and I want this better vest. Okay. I'm going to his pockets. What does he have in his pockets? Nothing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up. Because I got his gear, so I can use it right away. So I'm gonna take out the AK. And as you can see, it's missing like a dust cover because the gear is totally random, so there's not it is not always complete. Now, I need to know, Kame, because right inside that building right there, there's a way to get out of this and extract with the gear I have on. Or, if you want me to, I can go hunting for more people before I extract. You all let me know. I have enough shit go killing. Fair enough. That's very, very fair. Okay. My body armor is actually broken and it's at 0 out of 30. So I think what I'm gonna need to do... Put the magazines in this pocket. And I'll keep that open in case I need to reload randomly. Because if you do not have a space in your inventory, like in your tactical vest, to reload your magazine, like here, let me show you something. If you reload casually, I click it once. You take the magazine out, put it in your vest, and now it's right there. However, if you just want to reload very quickly, so let me quickly, let me quickly reload. If you want to reload quickly, because you're like you're in the middle of combat, you can just double tap R and you just flick the magazine out. See, now your magazine is on the ground. Very interesting, isn't it? That you can choose different ways to reload. I think that is fantastic. 
I'm gonna put the one with less ammo in because I want to live dangerously for Kamikaze. Here we go. It is barbed wire, gotta watch out for that. Because that will mess up your character. You can die instantly by going through barbed wire because it will just rip apart your legs. I'm gonna go back to the factory, see if I can find another another way to. However, this is how the scav world works. The scavs will not shoot other scavs unless that scav kills another scav first. Now that I've killed that random computer scav, now the other computer scavs take me as a threat, so now they will shoot at me. So now I have to be very, very careful. Before I was being moderately careful because I did not hear a lot of gunshots. Now I have to be very careful because now every team is gonna want to kill me. There's not a single friend in the server right now. That is gunshots right up there on the hill. I need to be careful that I do not get shot by some guy. Sorry about the lag. This is another extraction point down in this bunker. But I heard the gunshots. Right from. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. I stepped in a barbed wire and my guy started screaming, as you can see. There is somebody right beneath me inside the bunker. I heard him moving around. So I need to be careful. But I'm not gonna go for him. Instead, I'm gonna go over here real quick. I'm gonna kneel down in the bush, just so I'm a little bit more hidden. And I will check my health, which it looks like my legs are a little injured, as you can see. And this is my total health. My legs are a little injured, but everything else is growing, so I'm, I'm pretty well at the moment. If you get shot, everything will pretty much go yellow, which is why you want to avoid getting shot, which is probably just a good rule for life, but. Us dangerous people in the stream would like to leave on our I hear more gunshots in that direction. But people who like to leave on our toes normally do not follow that and we like to do crazy stuff. Yeah, well no getting shot needs to be high up on our priority list if we wanna be around long enough to do any stupid shit. This is where the nerves come in, because scouts can spawn practically anywhere, the, uh, the computer AI. They can even spawn in the fucking roof and you cannot get on the roof. Whole another area to go to. Gas station it looks like over there. That is the big choke point for the map. Because unless you have a certain key to open up that door that is down there, basically, in one of those buildings, you have to go through the gas station area. So maybe I'll go there, go look for kills. Is that what you'd like me to do, Kamikaze? Because normally, if you want me to get kills, the gas station is, like, high on the list of places that you would go if you want to kill someone. Oh, I just saw someone. He just came up over that hill. Watch out because I don't have a helmet, which means that if a guy sneaks up on me and just starts shooting me in the back, I'm pretty much dead. I don't have any medical supplies except for, I believe, one bandage. And I'll be honest with you, if somebody lights you up with a pistol, like I did to that poor guy, this one bandage is not going to be able to stop a lot of bleeding. And you bleed a lot in this game. If you are shot and you bandage yourself, when you're randomly walking, you can start bleeding again because your wound will reopen. Stuff like that, it's very, very realistic. 
it's also very scary because of how realistic it is. Means that even the most, like I said, hey, the listen. oh, we got a subscriber. Holy shit, that scared the fuck out of me. And that's the player right there. Oh, he's fussing at me. Okay. That was another player over there. Alright, he's dead. I'm gonna wait a minute before I go to loot that guy because I think he might have a friend nearby. For the desire. There is no direct communication, so you cannot talk over voice in this game. All you can do is uh, mumble at somebody, but mumbling can be taken so many ways. It could be. Because AI people randomly mumble, so like if you're randomly mumbling and somebody comes by, they could think you're a AI, so they just kill you. That's when you're trying to be friendly. I mean, oh, I see he killed somebody right there. I'm gonna search this guy. He's got broken body armor. He also has a shotgun. Oh, and a big backpack. Whoa! It's got four by four. As you can see, it is a very, very big backpack. And I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna discard that. Take his big backpack. Check his pockets. He's also got a mask. I'll put the mask on. Nothing in his pockets. And his body armor is still pretty broken, so I will... I will take your shotgun kills, nonetheless. Sorry, I will check that donation in one second. This game is very intense and I will not be able to... ...casually look around. Especially when I'm looting, because I have to be very careful that I do not get shot by a random person. I'm gonna loot from back here, in case somebody comes around that corner, I can at least work around this. Let's loot this guy quickly. He's got a pistol. I'll take that. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you again for subscribing to Kamikaze's channel. I am not Kamikaze, I am instead playing in his place at the moment. But I thank you nonetheless, he's a good friend of mine. And he's also monitoring the chat right now, so... No funny business, lol. He's got just a bunch of crackers, basically. That is not a race team, by the way. Okay, it looks like those two people got into a skirmish. And uh, I forced that guy to come out on the lower end of the spectrum. So I'm gonna run out of here before anybody else comes by. Go back into the factory and see what else I can find from maybe more AIs. Whew. So I wanna know if um how exactly the audio was when I was shooting that guy. I tried to go for a headshot, but my mouth did not go far enough because my Chinese would block it. So perhaps I need to I need to move up with ends. Okay, this is looking good. I've got shotgun now. Oh, this is a very big shotgun. It is also automatic, so I can just go... <laughs> just shoot them a bunch of times. I right, thank you very much, Kamikaze, for that. He's just monitoring this alongside, also letting me know how the stream looks and whatnot. Because I cannot see the chat right now. Okay, this is a pistol grip. This is interesting because I believe if I inspect it, I can take off okay no it is a, it is I cannot modify it in a red. Okay, so I have to do it elsewhere. But I got water and also food. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly eat these crackers. Get at a hundred here and then my thirst will go down because it takes a little bit. And then I will drink a little bit of the water. Let's drink like twelve. Oop. So then I still have about half my bottle left. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, there is no one that can spawn in this area. Not even player or uh, uh, computer scouts spawn in this back area. So this is just free for looting. I will show you the looting system when it comes to actual looting. Like not looting corpses, rather just looting like military crates and whatnot. So the areas that you want to look for loot are cars, 
because cars have lots of loot like in the trunks and whatnot like as you can see i just saw something oh never mind it was to close the lid but there's loot back there and then there are these military crates which are these bright green crates with that symbol on them when you open it up it show you this which is all the areas and then it, the random attachments and magazines will happen so it's actually we got ammunition for the ak so i'm gonna unload it put the bullets in and then take the bullets extra see i can put the bullets in the magazine and then just load the magazine back in wow that is very lucky and then i'll take the magazine and the extra bullets wow i'm glad to see that the loot tables are somewhat fixed now before we continue, I also want to make sure that um, if I kill you during this raid and you actually randomly see this for the future time, I want to apologize. Uh, at the same time, thank you for your shit. You just helped fund Kami's entertainment stream with loot. So, hashtag get fucking shot by another Russian in a Russian video game. Get wrecked, blog. I don't know, think that is something that you can put in a hashtag because there is cussing in it, but it is still funny, yes. Alright, I'm gonna be careful because running is very, very noisy. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap back around and go over there and see what I can see again. When I go close range, I'll take out the shotgun so I don't have to waste ammo at range. And I also don't like the way that this gun has no <laughs> dust cover on it. Because I believe in the future they will be adding in so your gun can jam. If you are firing it without a dust cover, it will just jam randomly. You don't have to fix the jam. Like unload a bullet under the floor and whatnot. Very, very cool stuff. I'm very excited to see how this game progresses. Let's not see a lot of people. I don't see anyone, actually, which is... Which is good and bad. Good because that means that technically there are no very visible threats, so nobody with body armor who's getting cocky and running around with a shotgun murdering everyone. But bad because if there is somebody with full body armor and they are being sneaky, I'm probably already dead if they decide to shoot me. Oh, that is also very convenient that I walk upon this. I do not know the maps perfectly, I've been on customs tons of times. If you want to check out my channel, I do it quite a few times. And I can stack the bullets and oh my god there's so many oh my god there's an attachment wow I got a scope I cannot put that on anything but I can grab it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drink the rest of that green tea I'll eat the crackers eat the crackers it'll lower these and then I'm gonna drink the rest of the water and take the rest of this ah Okay, so we take that, we take that, and we take that. Perfect, and now I'm full on everything, pretty much. So my backpack is getting full, so I'm gonna consider extracting soon instead of going for more loot. I can go for more loot in an hour. You cannot, if you go on a scav and you get shot, you cannot just go into another scav character. You actually have to uh, wait one hour and they'll give you another randomly generated scav. And as you can see, there is the dead scav that we killed before. And hopefully nobody is around here. Well, I cannot pop back in right away, Kamikaze. Because uh, I have to wait one hour as a scav. I do not want to go on my PMC character because I'm afraid I'll, I will lose his stuff. I can do some dry raids if you like. I can go in with like a shotgun and some basic armor. Okay, let's take a look. It's very dark. Very, very dark and there is gonna be a tons of options like here look at the door real quick um, I have the option to close it but I'll quickly show you what you can do with the door in the future so basically in the future we, you'll be able to like breach it banning clear so you'll be able to like knock on it so people come to the door and then you kick the door in their face and kill them you can also flash if you get a flashbang you can chuck the flash in and then go in you can knock on it you can also move in Oh, I hear somebody coming. Somebody's close to the extraction. Here he comes. <laughs> oh god, he killed me! Holy shit, I shot him a lot, but it did not kill him. As you can see, the body armor kind of absorbed all of his bullets, and he straight up murdered me. Holy fuck. So, even though I got all that cool gear and killed all those people, and I was right next to extraction, um, I did not get away with any of the gear because I was killed in action. See, all items brought by you into the raid or found in it have been lost.
in short items can be recovered if they were not picked up or used by anyone else that is if you are accidentally disconnected and then it gives you all your stats your blood loss your body parts hp drinks use food medicine how far you traveled how much ammo you used how many people you killed it's very cool Ugh. i will go on to a raid with my normal pmc now so you can see uh how the game is played more So basically, like if you look now, see from Tarkov, my next guy has totally random look. It looks like he has a bigger backpack. Uh, he's got glasses. He's got a different kind of pistol, and a bunch of other stuff. And I have to wait another hour for that. So I'm gonna take the big, the good loot of this character, and I'll go back into custom so you can see um, some more gameplay, not just me getting murdered right away. So I'll put the backpack right there. I'll put my armor inside of it. Boop, boop. Uh, boop. Uh, the boop. The tactical rig, and I will—I'll just take the medical supplies. I'm not worried about it. Uh, if I die, then somebody's gonna get lucky with my medical supplies. There is so much to go around. Honestly, in this game, you find so much of it. So I will take two uh, bandages. So I have two bandages, two splints, and this is the gamma container, which I'm gonna empty right now. But basically anything, anything at all that you put in your gamma container, even if you die, you get to keep after the raid. It is like a safe container. It is uh, very nice. So I'm going to bring along... Oh man, maybe I should... I'm going to bring along one med kit to replenish health. I'll stop the bleeding and the fractures and whatnot, but I'm going to bring along one med kit. And this is a normal med kit, which will only give you your health back down here. But if you want to get rid of like, like let's say that your leg is broken, you are bleeding, and you are missing a bunch of health. If you use this, which is the better first aid kit, it's called Saliwa. If you use that on your injury, it gets rid of all the bleeding, all the fractures, and, and it gives you health back. So this is the best kind of med kit. So I, I packed in two of them, along with normal med kits and bandages. Because bleeding in this game is horrible. So I pack in these, and anything I put in there I can save. And I'm going in with no armor. Nothing. All I'm going in with is this tomahawk. Um, and I'll put the first aid supplies in here for right now. So just in case I get killed off spawn. And just the gamma container, which you do not lose if you die. As you can see, it has like this red lock. So you keep it even on death. Is everybody still with me? Are we still good? I'm gonna quickly check the stream, make sure that we are all online. Yeah, at the moment they are only running off like maybe a couple hundred servers, which is not good at all because, well, I mean, because it's just alpha, there's not a lot of people playing it. However, the people who are playing it are constricted to just those little bit of servers, so. If a lot of people went into a bunch of different servers, it would lag on the server, and then the scals would kind of be phasing all over the place. And if you look now, my guy does not have a backpack, no tactical rig to hold magazines, no backpack or uh, no baggage, no weapon, no helmet or armor. He's just going in with bare clothing, the gamma container, which is that safe container that you can all see, and then the uh, pockets that you can carry stuff in, and this tomahawk, which kills in like two three hits even for like armored people oh we're going right in this is fantastic so as soon as we spawn our goal is gonna be to get back right to where we were before here we go. Also, since I'm not playing on a scav, that means that I can earn XP now. Okay, we spawned in. I know where I spawned because I've played this map so many times and I've spawned in so many times. So the way to go is going to be... Oh god, the lag. i got to go down that road across that train down there. And I know people can spawn over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this military container and that one over there. And then I'm going to move on. Because when people spawn in, they are ruthless. Oh, oh yes! Bullets, bullets, a flashlight. 
I'm gonna put the medical supplies on the outside now. I have so much of it that I'm not worried about if I die and lose some medical supplies. I cannot take that. That looks like a molly bottle of water anyway. And come on, can you please send that again so I can see it? Sorry, I missed it on the bottom right. And I'm oh, and a good bandage. Okay, this is very good. Uh, this is looking like a good run. And even if I die now, the only thing I'm gonna lose are these items. So I'll put one in here and one in there. So now if I die, I only lose these. And anything that you put in your scabbard, which is this for like knives or anything like that, if you notice some of the scabs have like knives, uh, no matter what you put in your scabbard, you keep it like the gamma container. So even if I die, I keep this. If you look in the bottom left, it can tell you how fast I'm running by that arrow that I'm dragging kind of all over you, as you can see I'm manipulating. So if I drag it way down, as you can see my character walks very slowly. But let's say I need to be in a hurry, I can crank that up and then my guy walks very fast. And then that is stamina and also my position. Like let's say I'm gonna crouch, see how it moves that little arrow on the, on the far left hand. It's very nice, so you can tell exactly how you are, how you are standing, what position exactly. Now I need to get across this train quickly. Onto the bridge. Oh, never mind. I'll just take the side, the side path. Okay, okay, okay. Get over. Let's go. Oh, never mind. I'm out of stamina. I need to wait a little bit, and I'll quickly loot for you guys. I'll open a car trunk. So there's nothing in there. So we'll just move on. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of this game. It is only alpha and it is progressing so fucking well. It looks so nice. Like, this is in Unity and look how beautiful this game looks. It is so nice. Also, the gameplay is super fun and it is only... And it is broken, first off. It is shitty gameplay, but it is, but it is gameplay nonetheless and I love it. It is also very unbalanced and I still love it. It, it is absolutely fantastic. And I'm going in here because these cash registers you can open them up and sometimes they have money oh nothing in there it was broken for a second so somebody's been through here recently however there's like water and whatnot that is right here so i will quickly take the water and i'll just drink it just to get a full hydration because you can you can starve to death and whatnot also Something else in this game that they take into account is the effects of losing certain parts of your body, which I'll go over once I'm up here. Probably should have closed that door, so if somebody come by, they're like, oh, I go in here now. So basically, if you get shot in the head, well, first off, I do not know if you can even lose all your health on your head and survive. But normally if you get shot in the head, you are dead. If you get shot in your chest and it goes to zero, you do not die. Instead you begin, excuse me, to cough. And eventually you'll die randomly because you'll just, your chest will stop working and you'll probably asphyxiate or something. If you get shot in your right arm or your left arm, you can no longer work. Like if you are wielding a weapon on your right arm, you can no longer shoot that weapon properly. Like it'll be super shaky and it'll be flying in all directions. Uh, if you get shot in your, either one of your legs and they get all the way gone, then you'll start to limp. And if you get shot in the stomach fully, well, you lose all your hydration and energy. So then you have to consume food and heal your stomach. Otherwise, you immediately starve and uh, die from you die from dehydration and hunger immediately. Which is, I guess, kind of interesting. Like if you get shot in the stomach, maybe like the liquids pour out of your stomach or something like that is what they're thinking. Also, I'm seeing that there is some kind of issue with the stream, so I'm gonna quickly restart it once I get into a safe location. Or a safe-ish location because I hear people talking over there. <laughs> Somebody's giggling. Oh! Oh, I'm being shot through the bushes. Oh, I've been killed. Okay, as you can see, uh, I was just shot dead, and I could not even see the person. I'm guessing that the person giggling was probably like 
a, a scav that saw me because as you know scavs have like aimbot and they can see through bushes so i'm probably just got killed by a computer controlled character but i did not have anything on my character to lose so we're all good we're all good my friends but what i did recover from the gummo container i recovered a magazine which is very very fucking nice a spar magazine a bandage I, mean, I got an army bandage which the only difference between this and this is that this activates quicker this bandage use time is four seconds and it gets rid of blood loss the army bandage is only two seconds so if you're in the middle of battle you can just go like boop bandage all good and i got some good bullets which i do not know what to do with them so perhaps i just stick them right here i'll take one of these splints out put it in here then we can't these bullets do not fit in this magazine which is why i do not put it in there i think these are made for like um for like this this is a sniper rifle that i have it is a sks semi-automatic and i believe that one of them is that's the 762 i believe the 55645 is for the m4 like the stanag ammo so i'm gonna just leave that right there i'll take care of that later but actually what i can show you is this trading and if i go into this guy I can buy in sale items and they're gonna be coming out with like tasks and whatnot. So I can sell, what can I sell to him? I can sell all the good stuff. I don't know, I wanna sell the magazines that I have full. I can sell him an empty magazine, which I'll do for 600 rubles. I only have 78,000 right now, so I need to go up. And then I believe I heard a grenade activate. I think that is on my backpack maybe, or maybe it's somewhere down here, I don't know. I heard a grenade sound. Basically, you can sell grenades for like a thousand dollars, but there. And as you can see, the money gets added right here, Matt. About 80,000 rubles, which is not bad. So, PMC. We'll go back to customs and we'll try for another run. This is very fun. I don't even, not even care that I'm dying over and over again. I'm just having a lot of, lot of fun. Just uh, spawning in, trying to get loot, make my way to the end. The only thing that gets a little strenuous is they walk from the area you spawn on your main character, the area you spawn in as your main character, rather than the scav. Because the scav you can be like in the middle of factory, so you can just kill right away. But if you're like on PMC, you always spawn like on the other edge of the city. So maybe the run is the only thing that's really strenuous about these kinds of things. Otherwise than that, everything else in the game is so fun, it is so incredible. Everything about it is just fantastic and there are tons of th different things you can do like this is not just like some average shooter with just like the average perk every now and then I, I will show you right now Okay, so this also happens a few times awaiting players Sometimes you just lag out as well and it's just awaiting players which is basically is waiting for your connection to work properly but um, it is not doing it is doing that right now, so I'm gonna just wait for this to load back in and I can uh, see what somebody was talking to me So is the stream doing good right now? Just want to make sure that we are all online and all okay. Can I get a... The stream is fine. Or a... Um, the stream is not fine. What the hell have you been doing for the past like hour and a half? Let me take a look real quick. Oh, never mind. I'm the Bruin. Gotta get ready. Wah! Oh, all is good. Okay, we are con we are good to go. So as you can see, I spawned in a new location, which I also know where this is. This is just down the road from the train. And I've, there's been gunfights inside that little factory over there, so I need to be careful. But if everything is okay at the moment, I believe should be able to go right through this door I'm gonna do something cool for the stream breach it yeah. so breaching is where you just literally kick the fucking door open 
If you do that to a wooden door, you literally kick it off the hinges so this goes straight through. If anybody's on the other side, they actually take damage from it, so this game is very, very awesome in that respect. We want to go back to the dorm area as soon as possible, because that is where scavs spawn, and that is also where a lot of loot is in the dorm rooms. Funny how <laughs> the dorm rooms have like pistols in their backpacks and whatnot, it's kind of like... Something that is almost mean, almost disgusting thinking about, like a shooting in some kind of university. But they do that just to show like, um, scout hideouts almost. Not in that trunk again. Man, I'm getting unlucky with that card. Oh, I do not know if this is true, but one of my friends told me that in the streets of Tarkov, which is a, another one of the maps, like this is a map custom. Room 308? Got it. I will look for room 308. Uh, room 308. Yeah, I will search dorms for that. And it always has money in it. That's good to know. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Later on, they're thinking about adding... Um, what is that? Oh, that is tuna. Blech. Not a big fan of tuna. Never been. Never will be, probably. What is that? There is herring. Anything on the shelves? No. Uh, there is pineapple juice and apple juice. I'll take the apple juice and the pineapple juice. And I believe that is all that is in here. Oh, there can also be money in the register. I'll check one more time. And then I will head to the room and see if I can club somebody to death. Nothing. So somebody's been through here already. Got it. I will continue on. I'm keeping my eye on that road because sometimes scavs walk across it. If I see scouts spawning, I know there is not a player over there because scouts will never spawn next to players. Normally, anyway. It is alpha, so anything is possible, right? So room 308, there, that room always has money in it. Like, what are we talking money? Are we talking like a lot of rubles or are we talking about like, like euros or maybe like dollars? I cannot see the chat because it is minimized as I need to focus on the game, so if you can say it in the chat, the comment will relate to me via a private message. I'm coming up to another building near dorms. I hear somebody nearby. Not in this building, I think. Oat flakes. And what is that beneath me? I'm gonna close this door. I'm nervous now. That window over there, you can actually shoot through, so I need to do this quickly. I have 500 and... Ooh, almost a thousand rubles. Alright, I'm gonna drink all the apple juice. Just to get rid of some of that. And then I'll take the rubles. And I'll put the home back tuna. And I'll keep the hair in Because fuck hair. No, 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 never. Mind. Fuck tuna. Give it a hair I'd rather eat hair than tuna. Especially tuna from a can. That is about cancer. Here we go. So scavs will spawn in here, in some places, so I need to be careful. Also, there is a way to get up on top of that roof over there, and players can do that with like a sniper rifle, and then anybody who comes in this area, you can just fucking obliterate. And I believe that door up there is open, so there might be a player nearby. So I'm gonna quickly look. Yep, I'm gonna shot at. I don't know where I came from. Holy shit, that was scary. I'm gonna move around, see if I can get behind whoever was shooting. <gasps> There's a guy over there. That is the guy shooting. He's very close. He cannot hit me because he is one of the stupid scabs who doesn't use the fire even though he's not hitting me. Once he runs out of ammo, I'm gonna charge him. There he goes. Ah! <laughs> Lol. <laughs> oh, he has body armor! Oh my god! And a tactical rig in a backpack. 
All right, I'm gonna quickly search his pockets and then I'm gonna get the fuck out of here because that is such a good draw. He's got, he's got nuts and a grenade. Oh my god! And that's the good military grenade, the one that I just found. That is the one that can heal multiple, multiple people. Oh my god! And he had a full AK. Oh, and he even has a top. I just come around. All right, and on. I will also show the cool features because I have food and water, so I can be out here as long as it needs to. Let us search. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Oh my god. Here's an empty magazine. A grip and some fucking milk. Alright, whatever. I'll put the food in here. Aaron can go there. I'll put this in here. Nope, wait a minute. Uh, you stay there. Grip. Grenade. Probably I'll take the... Nah, the, I'll take the screw nuts. No, no, no. I'll, I'll take the hair in. Whatever. And now I can put this and this in here. Now that magazine is empty, so I also put that in here. Because if you're in the middle of combat, there's a chance you just reload the uh, the empty magazine, which is death. So, prefer not to do that and have body armor now. Now you can repair the body armor if you go to one of the traders. You can totally repair to back up to Terry, I believe. And this bullet magazine is missing one, which is fine with me. I think when I cooked the... You saw when I cooked the bullet before, it actually emptied one to the ground, which is something really cool. Now I'm going to show you the different things real quick. So, controls. You can check the time with O. You can also change fighter modes with B. And I will do the B first, and also I will do examine weapon with L. So, if you do B, you actually visibly like click it. So I believe that this is single shot, like a like a like semi-automatic, and then this is and you fire everywhere. Um, and then also there is O. Oh, I don't have a watch on my character yet. Okay, how about L? So you can inspect your weapon. Like, oh, look how sexy it is. Lol. Um, <laughs> the controls. Uh, here, check ammo, check chamber. So P and left bracket. So I believe if you click P. Okay, P does not work. How about left bracket? Okay, not work either. I will have to check that later. But basically, you can open up the chamber of your weapon and see if there is a bullet already in there. Which is very, very cool. Very, very cool. Um, let me check what is here. There's a guitar. There's garbage. There's moldy water. Is that cigarettes? Can I take those? No. There's... Oh, there's a duffel bag. I can search. Let me see what is here quickly. I can take Tushonka, a fucking DVD player, lead bomb, and also some more food. Or something. And then anything inside the tent? No, I don't think so. I'm gonna get out of here before those shots get closer. Because I'm worried that there are more people coming behind me. Yeah, I know. Only me, only the Shank would go and look for loot when he hears gunshots right behind him. What I'm doing right now is I'm going to navigate back to the gas station. And gas station is the choke point on the map. The only way to continue on, unless you have a certain key, is through this gas station area. You can either go on the road all the way through, which I think is suicide. Or you can go through the little bushes over here, which is a sneaky big way. I can see through the bushes. And then I'll peek in. Make sure there's nobody waiting for me right away anyway. I think we're I think we're good. I'm gonna peek in. Can lean around a corner. Oh, I hear somebody inside. Air scav. There he is, and he sees me right away. <gasps> he almost straight up executed me. Did you hear the bullet? He right next to me. So that scav has like the M lock scav, so he can kill me immediately, basically. Because that means like half the scavs in this game automatically lock onto your head. So that means like as soon as he can see me, he's gonna shoot me in the head. To prevent this, I'm gonna try to kill him first before he can even get close to me. <coughs> oh shit, I'm being shot. As you can see, I'm being, I'm being hit by somebody. And they are hitting very close to me, holy shit. And my arm is bleeding, so I don't know want my arm to stop working, so I'm gonna open this up. Now, bandage. That is a fracture. 
but I also need to use a splint on myself. That gets rid of the fracture. Now I have pain and a fresh wound. And now I use first aid on it and I should be good to go. And as you can see, all my little parts of my body are injured because I was bleeding. That is what bleeding does to you. Bleeding injures absolutely all of your organs as you bleed slowly. So bleeding is the most dangerous by far. However, I'm also running. And if you run when you have a fresh wound, there's a chance that you start bleeding again just because like the wound reopens or something cool like that. I want to make sure I'm not getting traced because those bullets were right behind me as that guy was firing. So that was not a, a normal scav, I think. I think that scav was a player. Which is why they were so good. Now I believe... This is... I don't know, know exactly what this is used for. I think I can use it now. No, I cannot. I don't know exactly what this is used for. But apparently it is good when it tells me. So... I will just keep it on me, I guess. Okay. I still have ammunition, so I can still kill people and defend myself if needed. I don't know, see anybody on... Oh my god, on that hill over there. I want to be careful, because I'm not going to go back to that guy. That guy's... Those guys' shots were a little too close to me, so I don't know. Their aim is very good, so I'm not going to risk it. And this is factory, or this is not the factory map. This is rather the factory area on customs. I'm using uh, my peripherals to look as well, so I apologize if I'm like looking at nothing. Okay, I'm gonna check over there. Don't see much. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last time. I'm gonna go around and then peek into the middle just in case uh, there is somebody waiting to look down that alleyway. I do not want to get sniped from the other end and not even give me a chance to uh, fire back. Extraction. And that is extraction. If I want to leave now, I can leave with my loot if I just go down into that bunker. Uh, but I think I want to stay and try to get another uh, or another kill besides that tomahawk to the face. Which is how you get rid of the scavs normally. You just abuse, you just manipulate them to the best of your ability and then you just club them once in the head. As you can see, the tomahawk was very, very powerful. I believe if you do not have armor, it kills you in two hits. Maybe one if you hit him in the head. Um, I don't know. Check me on that. I don't know exactly if that is how it works. But yeah. I'm going to check this military crate. See if I can find some cool attachments. Maybe some ammunition. Okay, there's a magazine. Better than nothing. I'm going to get rid of the herring. And put the splint and the magazine in there because I want to actually combine this red with something in case I die. Um, I'm not worried about medical supplies. If you're wondering why I'm getting rid of medical supplies for anyone new that is here, um, medical supplies you can just buy for very, very, very cheap from the nurse, so it is not a big deal. As you can see, that scab took a lot of bullets. Let me check him. He just did the... Okay, he had a shotgun. Oh, he had body armor, that's why. He absorbed a lot of the bullets. And it actually took me 21 bullets, or a little bit less than that, to kill him. Through the body armor, which is why you normally aim for the head, but I'm not feeling accurate right now, and I'm not playing CSGO, so... I do not care. And he also has a big backpack, so I'm gonna do the little cheatsy doodle yet again. I'm gonna search it. And if you have something that can fit in here, which that is very good. I want a good stock. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this splint out. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put this stock vertical. I'm going to put this splint in there. And then I'm going to stack the backpack. And I can put that whole thing in my inventory. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Manipulating game mechanics. XD. Okay. I'm going to continue on. And that is extraction there. That is how I get out of here. So I'm going to go. I'm gonna just run in, because the door is closed, so I do not think anybody can be here, and honestly, if there's somebody down there, just waiting for them, it's not gonna help, so, here we go, I'm gonna open, get in, get in, get in, 
and around the corner, and now it is extraction. And I have to only wait about 8 seconds, and at the end of this, I should be free to go. It gives you the loading screen, like, success, you've escaped. I believe here it is. Okay, 6,000 experience, and I came out with some pretty good fucking loot. As you can see, the blood lost, uh, least damage part, drinks medicine, um, all the rubles, the bodies are looted, everything. It tells you everything that you've done, how far you traveled, uh, who you killed. I killed two scavs, so they're both they were both um, player or not player controlled, but they, they could be player. Oh, they're both players, yes. They're both player scavs. So the guy with the shotgun that was crouching right there, that was a guy, and there was also the guy at um, in the beginning that I clubbed in the head. That was actually a player, a legitimate player. <laughs> it's not very good for him, and as you can see, it, it gives you like the escape bonus and for healing and consuming and getting headshots and whatnot. And I leveled up. I'm now level 26. Now, I believe I'm going to be able to take all the loot from... Yes. If I go to character, now I see all the loot I got in that game. Now I can move it into my main stash where all my other good loot is. Uh, but I will do that. And I will be ready for the next video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to stop this stream. And I will begin in maybe a little bit. I'm going to talk to Kamikaze, see how he feels. If not, I will see you all another time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Kamikaze's channel. It would mean a lot to him and the community that surrounds him as we are all very close. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,